In this lecture, we're going to discuss adding additional information to our bill of materials. By additional information, we mean anything you would like to add in the BOM, in addition to the standard information of part number, description, and quantity. So we already did this bill of materials and provided it to our client. However, he takes a look at it and requests the following modifications. First, to change the title, part number, into part name. Second, is to add two more columns, one with part numbers and the other with the cost. So let's go ahead and do those tasks. You can download the parts, assembly, and drawing files from the download section linked to this lecture. If you're coming from the previous lecture, you will not need to do that. Let's start with the first task to change the title of the first column from part number into part name. Changing the title is quite easy. I can simply double click on the cell and then change it in the way I want. So I'll change the word number into the word name. And this concludes the first request we have. The second request is to add the part numbers as well as the cost. So I'll go ahead and add a new column for the part number and I will add it next to the part name. So I'll highlight B, right click, and then go to insert and select column to the right. And this adds a new column. Once you add a new column, you'll get this window popping up and this basically asks you to select what type of information you want displayed on this column. So under column type, we have a number of options, unit of measurement, equations, item numbers, and so on. If I select custom properties, I'll get another drop down menu to select other options. And I would like to have part number. So I'll go ahead and select part number from here. And this displays all the part numbers we have. This bill of material is getting big, so I'll make it smaller. I'll highlight it all and then change the size. The other thing I need to add is the cost. So I'll go ahead and add another column, this time at the very end, highlight the last column, go to insert and select column right, and then I'll have the pop-up window again. Now, if I click anywhere in my canvas, this window will go away. If I want to bring it back, I can simply highlight this column and select column property. And this will bring it back. Now under property name, I can expand and I want to select cost. So I'll go ahead and select that. And then I will have the cost for each part appear. And this completes the second task we have, which is to add columns for part number and cost. Now one might ask, where did those custom properties come from? and What do they include? Custom properties, as well as other information like the description, come from the individual parts. So whoever created the part must have added that information. And those information could include anything the company requires or the designer wanted. For example, it could include the cost, name of manufacturer, name of designer, surface finish, manufacture date, etc. Before we conclude this lecture, we'll show you how you can change the information in an existing column. Assuming our client didn't want this description listed and instead he asked to change it to the part number. To do that, we can simply highlight the column, select column property, and then change description to whatever type of information we want. So if I select part number, you will notice descriptions will change into the part numbers. I don't really want to change that, so I'll change it back to description. And by this, we conclude this lecture on custom properties.